So I came into owning this business totally green and blind. You know, I, I have a degree in criminal justice. I've never mm. worked in retail. I'd never worked in run special. I, I, have, I love it. That's you know, I ran it. <laughs> I ran in high school. I ran collegiately. I've coached. I've done all that side of it, but I have no experience like this. And I yeah. think sometimes that's almost better as you walk in and you're like, I, yeah. no preconceived notions. This is what, you know, even, even down to what you talked about, like the customer service. Side. I was like, what would I want? If I, you know, an ideal world, what would I expect and want if I walked into a business? And that's right. part of what we try to do here is we, you know, we go backwards, we retrofit it. Hello and welcome to Around Town Carroll County, the show about entrepreneurs doing wonderful things right here in our own county and how you too can build a thriving business and live out your own dream instead of being paid to build someone else's. I'm your host, Adam Stoltz, owner of Digital Consulting LLC, a company focused on video marketing and content creation for your business, making your complex video projects simple. If you like what you see in here today, please be sure to subscribe, like, share, leave a five-star rating. You can also donate to our calls right on our homepage at aroundtowncc.com, and we can't thank you enough in advance for your support. My guest today has earned Best of Carol every year that they've been open. They've also won the Carol Biz Challenge in 2014. They were named one of the best small businesses by the Chamber of Commerce in 2016. They're named one of the top 50 running stores in America in 2019 and 2020. And they've been doing a charity race in Pennsylvania for nine years in support of Littlestown High School and the American Cancer Society. If you could please help me welcome to the show, owner of Run More, Mr. Steve Moore. Steve, thanks so much for joining us. Wow, thank you so much for having me on. And boy, I sound awful <laughs> impressive when you read that. That's a bit much. I mean, that's yeah. it's flattering. It sounds, really, it sounds really good on paper. Well, that's why we ask for the bragging rights, because they do it. sound good. On it does the, sound good. Yeah. Um, so for those that may not know and, and have not had the pleasure of coming to your store yet, what is Run More? So Run More is a brick and mortar running shop located right here in beautiful Westminster, Maryland. And uh, we opened up in 2014, specializing in all things running from apparel to footwear to, you know, helping putting on events and all that good jazz around running and walking in general. Awesome. Great. And uh, so uh, what year are you now on for being open? So we're coming up on year seven. Wow. Uh, in three weeks, three weeks from today will be our seventh year anniversary, which is still crazy, and crazy to think about. Today's an anniversary as well, right? Yeah, this is two years since we moved from our little tiny spot, uh, which was on Liberty Street across from O'Lordans to our, our big, beautiful Main Street spot over here on the other side of town. Great. And you're right next to Raphael's now. Right next to Raphael's, just, you know, more foot traffic, all that good stuff, yeah. more space. So this was, there was... It was really nice sort of outgrowing our old space and coming here because this place is two and a half times the size of our old store, not okay. to mention just, you know, aesthetically more pleasing and yeah. better foot traffic and all that good stuff. So it's been a really nice move. Yeah, I think I'd say they did a good job on this store. The, the, the front gorgeous. looks gorgeous. The inside's great with the exposed brick. Um, and, and, and actually, I know we're diverting already a little bit, but when I came to get my shoes, I had to go home and tell everyone I knew instantly the experience here is fantastic as well. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, it reminded me of being young and going to a shoe store of the old school days where you got your foot measured and somebody actually brought out shoes to you to try on. Um, yours is a little more, uh, I would say, updated with the cool little foot scanner you have. But your staff is knowledgeable. They knew what they were talking about. They were all super kind and polite. So uh, just a little plug for you there right away. It was, it was Thanks. a great experience. Yeah. Thanks. You know, um, I'm, I'm sure we have a topic of things that are a list we want to talk about. But, um, you know, that's honestly, that's, that's really nice to hear because that's one of our goals. Yeah. You know, when we opened, that was always one of our goals. I've been a runner my entire life, and I've been going to specialty run shops my entire life. And, you know, even though I've been a coach and a runner and all that good stuff, I like going to places and talk to people that know their stuff. Yeah. You know, and I just didn't, there was just sort of a void around that for us. And I'm, you know, and that's why we opened the doors was just looking for a place like this in town and not finding one and sort of realizing like, boy, they're, I can't be the only one who thinks like that. And I yeah. like to think I have more knowledge than most people did in that before I opened. So the Joe Schmo consumer who's maybe new to running has to have less than me. And where are they going? They right. have to be going somewhere outside of the county or going to a place that maybe didn't have the same resources and knowledge that we may have. Yeah. So that's sort of, you know, I appreciate you saying that because that's sort of certainly what our intention is. Well, and I would even say, I mean, it, even if you're not a runner, 
if you just need a good pair of shoes, like yep. as, as Kelly and I did, we're on our feet all day for video and photography. We, you know, we, we need to get into running a little more, but um, we just wanted a good pair of shoes where our knees didn't hurt, our yep. back didn't hurt. And um, so again, you know, you don't have to be a runner to come in to run more. My wife, when we, when we named the store, was adamant about not calling it run more specifically for that reason. And I do, you know, we hear it all the time. It's, I'm not a runner, but that's sort of our joke in here. If people come in, they're almost apologetic when they come in, they're like, I'm not training for a marathon, you know, or even I only run two miles a day. And it's like, that's neither here nor there. Right. I, you know, what are, what's our goals? That's what we talk about. What are your goals? What are you looking to achieve with this? If I saw you in 500 miles, what would you have liked to accomplish in that? Is it make your knees feel better? Is it to start a running walking program? Right. Is it just to be healthier or just standing on our feet all day? Yeah. So we've always sort of felt bad that we named it run more. It's apropos for what we do, obviously, but it does sort of make people feel a little almost intimidated because it sounds like you have to be a runner to be here. And that's even why we've even changed some of the logos on our front door, right. say like walk and run and, you know, orthotics and all the things that we do that might necessarily be run specific, but things that we sort of encompass with our business here. Yeah. I mean, when I was here, your employees even show me, she's like, you know, look at the bottom of your foot. You can see where you're dragging your heel, where this is. And learning all that stuff is you like, wow, this is really cool. I've, I haven't, especially since the internet came around and shoe stores kind of went the wayside for yeah. a bit. It was like wow, I, I kind of missed this. This was this was really cool to experience. So we like when people walk out a little more educated than they walk in, and it is always funny because for shoes, for some reason, like it's almost like an afterthought. Like if I said, right. "What size shirt do you wear?" You would know, you know. But if so, I'd say, well, "You know, what's just ballpark? What size shoe?" Like I I don't I don't know. I think I think these are a ten. I don't know. Right. Are they wide? Are they, you know what? I don't know. I have no idea. Are they neutral? Are they stable? I don't know. What's the difference? Like it's really interesting because like we have 72 styles of shoes on the wall and they all have a different purpose and focus. So right. it's really important to narrow that down. And that's what, you know, we ask a lot of questions. We do the measurements, we do the gate analysis, we get the pictures, all that kind of stuff, because we're sort of turning over these stones with the customer because most of the time they do not know. So we're yeah. sort of learning this with them about their own experience, their own feet, their own needs. So looking at somebody's, I have this terrible tendency when people walk in as I'm watching them walk. I constantly, it's terrible. I, mean, I guess it makes sense with what I do. But I'm watching somebody walk and they'll say, you know, I need this. And I'm like, well, I can tell that you're doing this on your foot. Do you typically do that? Like, I have no idea. And then we'll look and it's like, oh my gosh, you know, now you said, I do always do that to my shoes. I do have pain in that spot. It's like, yeah. Okay. Maybe we can improve your, your, improve your little existence here on your feet. And if your feet are happy, your knees are happy, your back, you know, everything yeah. sort of lines up there. So whether yeah. you're a runner or walker, we just understand the importance of like, get your foundation straight and a lot of things will fall in line that way. So if we get your feet kind of figured out on pronation and comfort and cushion and what yeah. you're doing with them, the rest of your body tends to kind of follow along. Yeah. Well, I, as we were telling you, when I first walked in today, you know, my, it took a little bit of adjusting cause my feet weren't used to all the comfort and gloriousness of the shoes, but man, once they did my back's better, the knees are better. Yeah. I, I don't have joint pain as much. So the shoes were worth every penny. <laughs> yeah. um, but, uh, well, I guess I should ask you some questions here though. Sorry. I, as I told you before, <laughs> yeah. I'm very, I, I yap a lot. I'm well, loquacious and it's hard to stop me oh, once I start yapping. I, I brought it up because I, I was. I was so impressed by the experience when I came here. I it greeted instantly. You know, people acknowledged you, took instantly. It was like, okay, how can we help you? So it was a, it was a good experience, Thanks. very good experience. Um, but I, I love the topics that you've chosen today, and let's start with the first one. So the challenges of opening specifically, and I find this interesting because I didn't even think this might be a problem, but manufacturers wanting to work with a store in Westminster. Yeah, I mean – so I came into owning this business totally green and blind. You know, I, I have a degree in criminal justice. I've never mm. worked in retail. I'd never worked in run specialty. I, have, I love it. <laughs> you know, I ran I ran in high school. I ran collegiately. I've coached. I've done all that side of it, but I have no experience like this. And I yeah. think sometimes that's almost better as you walk in and you're like, I, um, yeah. no preconceived notions. This is what, you know, even, even down to what you talked about, like the customer service side. I was like, what would I want? If I, in an ideal world, what would I expect and want if I walked into a business? And that's right. more of what we try to do here is we, you know, we go backwards, we retrofit it. And what, what is it? What is it I want? Well, that's what we'll sort of implement here. And I don't know any other way to do it. This is the way that we do it because I have no background in it. And so to that, I just assume starting a business, Carol, kind of, you pick up the phone, you call Phil Knight over at Nike and say, hey, ship me some shoes. I'm gonna, <laughs> right. I'll slide you a check and then you just ship me the shoes. Not at all the case. Not every single brand that we reached out when we first opened said, we don't want to work with you. And it was wow. so... It was so eye-opening and surprising and like a problem that I didn't foresee. Well, I'm sure deflating too a little bit. Unbelievably deflating. Yeah. I mean, 
it was it was a really crazy experience to to open up a business and you know just getting the financing alone was extremely hard and we right. had to do I mean it was very challenging just doing that as a small business and even a small business post the collapse of the financial market in 2008 where banks were really hesitant to lend to anybody especially oh, somebody yeah. walking in and going I have no business experience and I want to do a shoe store exactly <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're like okay so we're in Amazon world and you have no business you have no idea what you're doing right. here and how, how much did you want that check made out for you know so that was challenging and then you got to get around those obstacles and you've cash in your 401ks and you're borrowing from friends and you're doing everything that you need to do to open because you're really you've got your vision you've got your plan and then you call a brand and you say hey i've been a runner my 30 years and i've got these things and i'm going to do this and they go oh yeah where are you located uh-huh yeah i'm not interested in working with you calls in two years and it was just it was very much similar almost when you're going to the bank and you said they say you need two years of business you know you need to be open two years before we finance you i go well how do i how, how does that work how does that make sense yeah so that was a very challenging thing and and for the first the first year we didn't really carry any of the big brands quote unquote you know the stuff that people would walk into a run specialty store and assume to see on the wall new balance brooks some of these big brands they just didn't want to work. I mean, they just flat out would just say, we don't want to work with Were you. Were they looking for bigger markets? Is that? It's both. So one of the brands famously said, um, you will be out of business in six months, and we don't want our brand to be associated with you when you go out of business. Wow. This was told point blank to wow. me from a brand, and it's like, I've done, I was like, what? And I literally was like, what did I do to you? Like, right, why right. are you so angry at me? You right, know, right, and it was right. a really challenging and frustrating experience to be told that when, again, you put everything into just trying to get the doors open. So some of it was the fact that they didn't think the marketplace you know, going through and saying, you know, Carroll County has X amount of people and how many schools. Right. And then proximity to other running stores. It's very territorial. And, and, mm. and these reps and these brands have very tight relationships with our stores. So, like, in this area at the time, we were the only one in Carroll County. But there was a running store in Pennsylvania, you know, within 30, 45 right. minutes Frederick. to an hour. Which seems so far to us. You know, like, would you really, would you hop in your car and drive an hour to get a pair of running shoes? But we had stores that were that far away that were telling brands don't open them or we'll cut our ties with you. I know of a store that was that's about 45 minutes away from us that actually <laughs> closed their doors, but they told one of our brands that if they open us, that they will kick them out of their store because wow. they were that territorial about us opening. Wow. Which is interesting. You live around, you know, we're between two restaurants right here on Main yeah. Street. You wouldn't expect that. It's not like, oh, you sell hamburgers. Well, I'm qu you can't sell hamburgers. Right. And that's how it is with, with, with shoes. It wasn't even to do with even Dick's Sporting Goods being in the area. It had nothing to do with Dick's. It was other stores like ours or just the marketplace in general of thinking huh. it's not worth our time you know it would having to submit full business plans to a to a manufacturer to have the privilege to sell their brand it, it, it was so crazy to that's, me yeah i remember sending my that's a learning curve i remember sending to one of the manufacturers my business plan and you know it's a whole business plan and getting a call back from one of the managers and saying, your business plan doesn't excite me. Your numbers don't excite me. And ironically, <laughs> they were all, you know, the, my projection numbers were so made up because I have no idea what I was doing. You know, it was like, this is my right. best guess. And I, I don't, what excites you? I, don't, I could double it because it's all made up anywhere. <laughs> right. I have no idea. Yeah. A billion dollars a year? I don't know. So it was very frustrating. So we, we, we opened, we had smaller niche brands on the wall, you know, and so like right. those first... Those first, you know, those first year, two years, three years, it was it was a challenge. I mean, I I, I worked on our full time job the first year we were open, so I had another gig. I was working seven days a week between my other job and the store, yeah. and I would have, you know, we'd have a day where like we'd have one person walking the entire day. They'd walk in and say, you know, I'm looking for this shoe, a shoe that you should see in every run specialty store. That now I have my wall, and I'd say, you know, I don't have that shoe. The brand won't work with me, but I have a shoe very similar from this brand you don't hear about, and they'll go. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, and then leave. How deflating that would be when you put <sighs> everything into it. And it's yeah. like, you know, and you'd get, you'd hear feedbacks of like, you should really think about carrying that brand. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I know. <laughs> yeah, really. I'm trying. Yeah, hadn't thought about that one. Yeah. So it was, a, it was a very eye-opening experience. And every year we've kind of proved people wrong. So like, you, you know, you're reading my, my, our list of acclimates here. I'm so proud of some of the things we've accomplished because, yeah. you know, really in hindsight, we have no business still being here. Looking at what we had then and what we overcame, I am so proud of, to still be here after seven years. But, you know, I'm glad, I mean, this show is exactly everything you just said, though, so I love it because, and I have, I have many questions. And the first and most easiest one, though, is all the reasons you just mentioned right there that you had to quit, and, and for a shoe store, right? I mean, it, it's, it may, may, I don't mean that as a, like a slight, but like, you know, 
how how much is your life really worth to go after this dream of a shoe store, right? So what was it in you that said, you know what, I don't care what these people say, I don't care what they tell me, I'm going to do it anyway. So, I mean, part of it honestly goes back to just my my love of running and like believing that it's important to have some of this in our community. Running yeah. is is the without a doubt the greatest thing to ever have to me is finding running as a, as a young child. You know, I just what it's done to my mental health, what it's yeah. done to give me a purpose, give me a community, get you know, friends, like the, you know, running in high school, the opportunity to be a collegiate runner, all these opportunities that have come to me because of running. Okay. And even without you know, being fast or slow, just what it feels like to go out there and run for a couple of miles and come back and what that does to you, just your whole brain and the yeah. things that you can accomplish during that. And to me, it's always been, I always say like, what I've gained from running, I will never in my life be able to give it back to what I've learned and given, been given from running. So this to me is like, just, oh, I don't say my gift, but like I, my obligation yeah. is a better way to say it. Like I feel obligated to running, to do something like this and share it with the community. So when people come in and say, I've got these problems problems in my foot. I'll never be able to X, Y, Z. Right. And we try to help them. And then I see him in 500 miles. Like, you know, when I started a walking program, like it like gets me choked up. Like it really, well, it means that much to me. Well, I would say gift is an appropriate uh, word as well. Cause we often mention on the show, everyone has a gift and it's your job to figure out what exactly. that is to give to the world. Right. So this was your gift. I, I think that's an appropriate word for that. Um, but, but you know, I, I also, I think you just mentioned as well, believing in yourself, right? I, I, I know I'm going to do it. I don't care what you tell me. I, I think that's important for people to realize too in, in any walk of life, but especially if you're trying to start a business. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to get kicked in the teeth many times yeah. as we did. And like, like I said, I have no, no idea what I'm doing on most of these things. So like we made terrible mistakes along the way, just not knowing any better, but just like anything else, you learn from it, all that kind of stuff. But that's even, the best way to learn. Exactly. But even like the correlation between running and opening a business is like, I think you can you can do as much with your business as you put into it, and that's very much how running is. You know, if you, yeah. if you're willing to put in 75 miles a week of running, you're going to see different gains than if you do if you do less, or if you're going to stretch the, even even beyond the mileage. If you're going to maybe eat a little bit better, or maybe you're going to take the time and take a yoga class, all those little those little ancillary things that improve you as a runner. It's no different than what I'm doing here. Right. Spending time trying to promote the business, going out and watching a race and trying to talk to the runners about coming to run. All those little things that we do outside of just the store hours that we right. have here, they pay dividends down the way. Yeah. 1% better every day, I think is the right. Yeah. You just do little things and eventually yeah. they stack up and, and at the end of the year, you can look back and see what you've done. <laughs> well, that, and that's also like the, 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 you know, there was the, the great Malcolm Gladwell book and they're talking about the 10,000 hour rule about like, you know, why the Beatles were so great because they practiced together for 10,000 hours. And like, I like to think, you know, I've run 50,000, 60,000 miles over my career. And every time you run a mile, you learn something about yourself. And that's yeah. some experience that I can, you know, every running injury, every weather condition, everywhere. I've probably experienced it in some capacity so that if I can share that and save you mindlessly Google searching, whatever it is. And that's also, right. you know, we tell people all the time, we are a resource. Whether you're mid run and something's coming by and you need to use the restroom or grab a water, we're here. Whether you've got plantar fasciitis and you're not, you don't need to buy shoes. You just need to talk to somebody about what the next step is. We're here. We're a resource, whether it's Great. financially or just emotionally. Come, come in here and vent to us about your, your back injury that you've been dealing with that's held you up from running because we are a place to commiserate because we've all been there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and actually this just popped in my head too. I would imagine, especially, I mean, you start running the huge marathons and you just set a 50 miler that you wanted to do. Yeah. There has to be something in that process when your body's beaten to holy heck and you don't want to go on any, that had to help you in the business aspect as well, right? Cause you've already been there, right? Your body's already beaten up. You know what yeah. it is to feel like not to want to go on. So it had to be a little easier for you as a runner. I'm assuming when the business stuff started slapping you around. Yeah. I mean, you're sort of used to that punch in the face kind yeah. of feeling yeah. of like, oh my gosh. And, and even just the, you know, putting on an event where you're up at the crack of dawn and you're standing outside freezing all day. It's no different than coaching when you're standing outside crack of dawn, watching a race all day, and then right. going and doing your other job. Cause when you're coaching, that's usually not a full-time gig, all those hours and hours that you're spending going right. into it. You're used to doing that here. And even the same idea of like having run, you know, that's, that's one of the dirty little secrets of running is there's a lot of days, most days we're runners. We don't want to go run. It's not always <laughs> enjoy. It is not always sunshine and rainbows going out there on a bad right. weather day or after a race when you're just feeling so beat up, but you know, no, you have to do it. It's part of the process. And some of that stuff's the same way it translates just like this. Yeah. Yeah. I would imagine so. Um, I had written down, I'm trying to remember exactly what you said, why I wrote it down, but people getting in their own way. Um, you, you know, you, yeah. What like, so even when all of this stuff is like, we don't want to work with you, you're not going to make it. You could have easily been like, yeah, they're right. So how, what was it in you? I mean, obviously the running helped, but, but was it, upbringing or was it just you know what like you said this is my gift and i could care less 
pretty much. I, I think part of it was just like in run, like <laughs> I was a horrible runner when I started getting a parking ticket. <laughs> I was, a, I was, a, I was a really bad runner when I started and I, re, I have, you know, very not fond memories of finishing dead last in races. And I, my first year of like competitive racing of like going to a race and being the dead last runner at a large invitational race and being like, I should, I like everything points to like, I'm not going to be a runner. Like this right. is, this isn't for me, but just that, like, I, I know that I can do this kind of thing. And just the stick to that you sort of learn of growing through the process of running and go, growing through this of like, I know that I can do this. And the more right. people tell me that I can't, it's just, it's going to make me that much angry. And that's right. You know, I, I don't want to say what like angrily started the business, but I definitely had a chip on my shoulder. I yeah. definitely had a, I'm going to prove some people wrong. Um, and it certainly was challenging, especially when like, working the other job for all those that time was like, it was really hard. And I yeah. did get to that point after a year of doing that. Cause I was, I, I closed every day at the store and I worked Saturdays and Sundays. So I worked my other job Sunday through Friday. I was a sales guy. So I was on okay. call Sundays. And I worked Monday through Friday and then I would be in the store nights and Saturdays and Sundays. It was insane. And you know, and then it was just a really tough time. And I remember like, and I was also training and I got the idea to open the business when my second son was, I had a newborn. I had another son, my wife works full time and I'm doing this crazy juggle. And like, and everybody's saying, you got to stop. You got to, you know, this is stupid. What are you doing? Right. Um, I mean, even my landlord was like, I'm not going to make you sign a lease. Like, and it seems like it's a really nice thing, but it's like, I don't want you to be handcuffed here when this doesn't work out for you. Right. Cause yeah, I'm kind of, you know, and I was like, thanks. I see what you're doing. I appreciate it. But also I, I understand you're doing this cause you don't think this is going to work. Right. And I get that. Right. So I came to a point after a year of like, I either need to quit my other job and just, I just need to be in here all day, every day, or yep. this isn't going to work. And so I, I, I made that tough decision and left my other job and it was really hard. It was really hard. Yeah. Um, and not, I never had that I'm going to stop, but just very like lean years, we would say, where yeah. everything was very cost, you know, very, very price conscious on my, in my just life. Cause every time I had a dollar, it was coming right back in the business. Yeah. And even the money we had to open, the amount of money that we opened with every time we, we had to buy more and more inventory. I didn't have the money to buy any more inventory when we opened. So we didn't have that much stuff in the store because that's all I could afford. That's right. all the money I had. So, you know, you make a buck and 75 cents goes right back into filling that store up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. Um, I'm sorry. I lost my train of thought there. Um, it's cause I got a parking ticket. Yeah. yeah I was going to say, yeah, you report you. <laughs> we Here's a fun you. fact for Westminster. You get six warnings in a year on your parking ticket. Really? Before yeah. you get a ticket? Yeah. They give you six warnings. Yeah. Oh, that's Isn't that nice? Know. Yeah. Because they, they said, you know, this is such a side thing, but yeah, they, they <laughs> want, they want people to come downtown and shop. Yeah. If you they see your car there overnight, you'll get a ticket. But if they just think you're just a consumer coming in downtown and spending some money on these out of our wonderful small businesses, they're going to give you a warning a couple of times. Yeah. That, so that's I, always would, nice. I would think so. Yeah. Well, that's, well, that's good to know. Cause I usually yes. park up in the free parking by the, and the that's police. great. And that's well, what a good little for. walk, right? It is a good little walk, but <laughs> yeah. you know what, but it's, but we just never want, I, and I always say, but don't ever let t parking be a deterrent for shopping small. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. And actually get out and have a walk down main street. It's great. Our main street's awesome right now. Yeah. Yeah. Westminster is it's very, very nice. Um, Let's talk about the transition um, from 100% in store to now 70 in store, 30 online, uh, and, and I'm, I'm assuming COVID's the reason for that, right? Yeah, we had we had been doing a little bit of online business pre-COVID. I mean, nothing crazy, but we had we had just started sort of you know dipping our feet in those waters because obviously that's the direction a lot of people are shopping with, and mm -hmm. and it was just like it really was like opening a second store. It was so hard to figure that market out, and like it seems so stupid, but like how's the easiest way to ship a pair of shoes to North Dakota? And it seems really like, oh, you just slap it in a box and take it down. You, no, there's a million different variables and weight and dimensions. And this company is better to shipping to this state than this state. And huh. like, and it's a learning experience. And every time you ship a box out and it costs you $25 to ship it, you go, that might not be the best way to do it. Right. And you have to, and that's the only way to learn it or stuff coming back because you didn't have it in the right box and know oh, that now the post office is weighing it and you didn't weigh it with the box. Just so many things that we learned along the way. Um, and even things like having to have a online store that represented not just what we have in here, but maybe what a manufacturer has that I don't have in store, but I can get to you in two days. Gotcha. So there was a con like every day was going through and updating pictures and changing inventory number. And we just sold out of that shoe in store and the manufacturers out. So I have to manually go in and take it off my online store because it's not connected to my point of sale. So, <laughs> I, I mean, it's, it was literally like opening two stores. And we were we were doing just like admirable we were doing a little bit of business and it was fun and we were growing our right. little youtube channel which is really what was sort of driving that online business and then covid hit 
And we were so thankful to already have that framework in place. If we yeah. would have had to have started that from scratch, it would have been a very different last year for us. But the fact that we already had some sort of framework in place to do online business really was advantageous for us. Well, and, and, um, because I'm not the one doing your videos for you, but I'd, I'd be curious to see what you have to say because I understand, I mean, this is why I'm in video, but talk about how video changed your, your business. I mean, how valuable is video to you and what you do? Yeah, um, you know, video killed the radio star. <laughs> see what I did there? Um, um, yeah, so that was a huge part for us of reaching out to different people was doing just little, we were just started doing these little fun little videos of showing people about the shoes because the same thing I always said, we have, you know, we have a little run specialty shop here, but if you live in North Dakota and you're an avid runner, you might not have a specialty run store anywhere near you. Right. And specifically going back to, there's so many different brands that are out there right now and so many different brands do different and cool and fun things. So like sharing some spotlight, most of the videos that we do that get a lot of, uh, a lot of people in views, it's not the big shoe that people are going to come in and say, Say, I just need X. It's the smaller niche shoes yeah. that do very well, but on like specific markets. Like some of the brands I carry do not sell to and will not be on Amazon and they will not sell to Dick Sporting Goods or, or you name those sports. Mm. They only sell in brick and mortar run specialty and their own e-commerce site. So okay. it really it helps us out. If somebody finds a shoe from us that they like, that's a small I'll name a brand ultra. And they say, great, I, I like this ultra shoe. And maybe next time, I, maybe I'll just pick it up at Dick's. Well, no, that you, you can't, you really kind of have to get it from us. And we have more education on that shoe than you're going to find from somewhere else. Well, and is that, cause that would be one of my questions and you know, it seems counterintuitive. Why would these companies not want to sell on Amazon and Dick's? But is that why? Because they want someone that knows actually what they're talking about to sell their product because it, it is so niche. Yeah. One of the brands I work with now, they, uh, at one point it was a small company and they sold to a, a consulting group. And the first thing they did was work a contract out and get into Dick's and specific Dick's around the country. And it's a really interesting shoe called Newton. And Newton has all these weird characteristics that you really need to explain to somebody why. And it seems silly, but it has these little air pockets to the toe of the shoe and they're designed to sort of almost propel you forward. You mentioned Ricky Bobby. I call it my Ricky Bobby. I want to go fast shoe. That's what I always call it to. I want to go fast. This shoe is designed for speed and it's not good for X, you know, it's good for this activity, not that activity. And you really need to be able to talk about the shoe. Gotcha. And they had a tremendous bomb going to Dick's. They had all these returns and people getting injured. So Dick's kicked them out and the company ended up being sold back to its original owner. Wow. So there's a lot of these things that each shoe, they all have their own reason why they do this, that. They all have their own philosophical beliefs on why, you know, this is the perfect stride. This is the perfect this. And so you have to be able to articulate that pretty well. And yeah. I don't think the average employee at Dick's is going to no. be able to articulate what an no. Ultra is versus a Newton. And again, that's what was cool about coming in here. I mean, your employees were pretty young, I mean, <laughs> you know, but, and, and honestly, my first impression was like, oh, great, we'll see how this goes. Their knowledge was insane. Yeah. And, and they knew exactly what they were talking about. Um, you could tell, I'm assuming most of them runners. Yep. So, um, yeah, that exactly. You're not going to find that at Dick's or anywhere else that Amazon, anything like that. So that makes sense as to why they're doing And they that get thing. excited about it. And it is a whole different landscape than when I was their age. Like I, I religiously read runner's world. Like I was the wait for the at the mailbox for runner's world to come. And I had my shoe buyer's guide. When I would go and try to find shoes, I would be able to point and say, you know, this is your know, runner's world said that this shoe is, you know, 9.2 ounces, blah, 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 blah. Right. Um, and so they're like that. They're already really tuned in, the, the, the kids that work here. Um, and I'm, I'm lucky to have had staff. My, my one employee, who's my newest employee, um, has been here two years. I just hired somebody else in the past week. But before her, my oldest, or my newest employee had been here two years. Everybody has been here longer than that. I have somebody who's been here for seven years since awesome. we opened. So we've, you know, I like to think that we've sort of fostered this cool environment for yeah. them to kind of, you know, and, and they'll get some free shoes now and again, and they'll get entries. In, but I, I like to think that they just like being in it like I do. They like talking about it, and they get just as excited when somebody who came in as a walker a year later signed up for a 10-mile race. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's going to be a cool feeling. Um, well, and, and back to the video stuff real quick, yeah. because you said you would wait for Runner's World, the magazine. But, uh, you know, how cool is it that with video and, and YouTube that you basically are your own Runner's World now, right? Because people look yeah. at you for reviews now, correct? Yeah, you're, I, I didn't really think about that. But yeah, you're absolutely right. And it is neat that people will, will get emailed like, hey, can you review this now? Like, I don't want to... I don't want to purchase or not purchase this shoe until I get your sort of two cents on it because hmm. I've come to grow and trust your opinion on. It. And that is a good way of looking at it. And it, and it really does. I feel like, again, I feel like a, I have to be bringing my A game on those because I am these people's best opportunity to learn about it besides just looking at the catalog specs that you're going to find from the manufacturer online. You well, know, a drop of a shoe, a blah, 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 all the little different right. characteristics and what they mean and why it would be good for you. 
Well, and let's talk about, you know, because I'm sure this is not why you wanted to do the YouTube. You probably thought, hey, it might just be fun to do some videos. But people actually look at you now as an expert, right? <laughs> yeah. So uh, and that's what I try to explain to people in video is like, look, if you are the first one out there talking about this stuff or, or you know, you become an expert. It's just how it works. So, um, and, and you said because of the YouTube, you're selling, uh, is it worldwide now or, or is it yeah <laughs> yeah i mean we do ship internationally now um wow. we ship we've shipped to every every state and every territory of the united states um it's really neat to sell like we have a regular customer in guam like it wow. seems so That's, weird cool. but we probably sold i don't know 15 pairs of shoes last year to guam and like you know to get we got this nice thank you card and this map sent to us That's cool. from this guy who's like I love your, your shoes and I have friends that I will then send to your channel. And like, I have this That's relationship cool. to a guy in Guam and like, it's so neat to talk to somebody from around the world or to get right. emailed questions of like, Hey, are you shipping to Germany? And what's the rate for that kind of stuff? It still blows my mind. Well, and as we were talking before the show, you know, internet, social media, it's all in how you use it, right? Technology. So yeah, there's a lot of bad stuff out there, but you just met a guy from Guam, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah how cool is that? And, and to think that again, you're in Westminster, right? You're not New York. You're not in LA, but, but people are buying your shoes. And that's why I think nowadays too, the other reason we want to do this show is like, look with the internet now, possibilities are endless for pretty much anything you want to do. And it's your fault if you don't take advantage of the opportunities that are here, because all it takes is some willpower, right? A, a desire to do something. And the internet can help you fill in employees, fill in, like you said, networking, uh, how to ship things. Uh, it's a pretty cool time to be alive. And that's even like having no background in this whatsoever is, is you have no preconceived notions of this is how you're supposed to, you, you set up your brick and mortar shop and you right. sell it to the people that walk in the door. But you, if you have no expectations of what you're doing, you're always willing to try different things. So I'm always willing to like, Oh sure, we can give that a try. We'll go out and set up at a, we'll go set up a booth at a 5k in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Why, not? Why not? We'll go, we'll go put on a night race. Why not? It sounds like fun. And I think people are going to be interested in it. And, and the fact that everybody that works here is a runner at heart, I think that we are more tuned in to what runners want and are looking for because like we're in it right. and not nothing against other stores, but like just like a dick. I don't think an employee at Dick's has the same relationship with running that me and my staff do. Right. So like they are sort of limited by their own experiences within the running community and even other running stores. Uh, you know, I've been to running stores around the country and such like that. And there's a lot of people that work with them. They're, they're great runners really into it. But you go to some that like, they're in it because it's a business. Right. They, they, they saw a need in the market and they opened a business. That's great. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. But like when you, when you bleed running, like that, like that is how much, it, I mean, it means everything to me. Yeah. I think you're more willing to want to share it. And when you want that, when you want to share it to more people, you're more willing to try different things. We talk a lot on the show. It's, it's, uh the greatest currency in the world is how you make others feel, right? So yeah. you're sharing that passion of, it, it, it rubs off on people. People can feel that energy. So yeah, absolutely, I think it's great. And I, we do have to do a, a little sponsor break, but I wanna ask you this real quick before I forget about it. Because again, a lot of people think, you know, hey, you opened up overnight and everything was hunky-dory and it was fine. But you're not the first person to say, yeah, I left my job with a kid on the way, uh, you know, it was terrifying because I, I didn't have a kid on the way, but I mean, I left the job around Christmas time. I had, I had no idea what I was going to do. Uh, and so I just I decided to start trying to take a chance on myself. But, you know, to anyone thinking about start business, what would you tell them? I mean, it's not going to be <laughs> overnight success, right? That we, this, this horrible term that we hear because nothing's an overnight success. Yeah, it, it was it's still, well, first off, it still weirds me out when I'm, when I think of myself as the owner of this place. I still, I was like, you're the owner. I like look over my shoulder. I'm like, who's actually in charge here? But, um, no, it, it, I remember when we were opening, I, I had somebody who I knew that worked in the running industry that I had talked to just sort of like, Hey, what do you think about this? And I remember them saying, this is a terrible idea. Not that you can't do it. None of that. Like, it's so hard. And I'm around stores and I see like, it's so hard. And again, I'm always like, yeah, I, you know, I can go whatever. When I can you do heard that. retail's dead. Right. All yeah. that. And, I, and I'm like, I'm on it. But like, it's, it's so much harder than I even thought it would be. And, and, I, and probably twice as rewarding as you thought it, it is. Yeah. It's <laughs> super rewarding. But like, I look back at, I look back at pictures of me when I opened it now. It's only been seven years. I feel like, do you, you've seen pictures like Barack Obama when he came into office and then when he left and he looks like he aged like 100 years. <laughs> I'm in a retail store and I feel like I've gained age a hundred years. <laughs> he had a little more important stuff on his plate than me, but I, I, but I do feel like 
it's so hard and it's always sort of, I don't say draining, but it's always on your mind. Right. There's never, and then even growing the online store because you're very competitive in that space. It's seven days a week. I mean, a biz, owning a business is seven days a week anyway, right. but like I need to get back to that guy's question in Maine because he might go order from somebody else where you might have a little more leeway with your local walk-in customers because you're their local guy, but like it's a different kind of marketplace online yeah. and you have to sort of change your expectations and windows. It's like there's always so many little things that you're working on and it's, it's I mean, it's, it's super fun that way, but it is, a, it's, it's just hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Well, and you know, that would be a question too is, I tell people the first couple of years I made less money than I ever made in my entire life. And oddly enough, I was happiest I had ever been in my entire life. Did you have a similar situation? Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah. I mean, I'd, I had always wanted to open my, uh, open a business at some capacity, which is kind of funny why I never pursued it whatsoever as far as education goes. But my wife is a chef and we had always talked mm. about opening a restaurant years ago. We had looked into opening up a winery in Kansas so this was like 10 years ago. No, I guess it was like 12 years ago. But yeah, we had we had looked at a place. We had started the financing operation, all that kind of stuff. And we ended up kind of backing away last minute because there were some some financial issues that were overturned that's with the place. That's not what you were supposed to be doing. And that's what we looked at is the place we we're going to look at had sort of fudged some of their numbers so that their business looked pretty strong on paper. But in reality, we were, we were going to buy a business that had no was not going to make it no matter how much energy we went to put it just wasn't going to work right so it ended up being a great thing but i'd always wanted to open my own business and my wife being a chef and at the time i was in the food and beverage industry i was working in food sales so i sold to restaurants and yeah. catering companies so we were both in the industry and we both we it's wanted to open, yeah and we wanted to be, you know we wanted to do something in the industry so i've always wanted to do something on my own we talk all the time about having a restaurant <laughs> And it'd be, it's still like one of those things, my wife, I, I do, I do think there are times my wife is a little bit, I don't want to say jealous, but she wishes she had some, she, some owner, she's not a runner at all. And she's like, well, it'd be nice if there was some food component in here. Now, again, knowing what I know now, how impossible it would be to open a food place, especially in this space with all the zoning issues yeah. and like the permits and all that kind of stuff. It's so much stuff, just even doing that, just all of the paperwork of opening up a business, which is sometimes, um, you know, it's very easy to, to go on and buy something from on, on like from an Amazon and such, but like right. there's so much extra money that goes into opening a small, there's so much yeah. money that goes out that you just don't see. And so like, I, I will have people that will come in and buy, buy a pair of shoes and let's just say it's a hundred dollar pair of shoes. Like, man, you just made a hundred dollars on this transaction. And it's like, no, 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 no. Like I've had, I've had many people that have said something along those ways to yeah. us. I was like, you know, I don't make those shoes. Right. And even if I did, there'd be some cost <laughs> of goods in that. Just, be, just from that. Yeah. We, we run into that with video. It's like, why does video cost that? Um, well, you saw. You mean all we this were, equipment what? that you just wheeled in on yeah. multiple trips wasn't well, free? But unfortunately, around here, a lot of people they don't roll in with this gear. It's it's very like a handheld little camera. Yeah. And and that's what people don't understand why I charge what I charge is like I'm do it to the best of my ability as legit as possible with the best gear, the best stuff. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I, I completely get yeah, And the same thing too. It's like, well, you just made X amount of dollars for doing this shoot. It was like, well, no, I didn't. I have to pay that person for showing up. I have to pay for all my gear, my software, the insurance to go out to just the right to shoot in a place. Yep. So it's all, yeah, it's a lot to cover, but, um, uh, real quick though. Do, before, do your, sorry. I know no, you had to do your read. Yeah. Right, I was just sorry. saying yeah, before we, uh, <laughs> before we get too far off here, um, I do have to thank Target Community and Educational Services. Uh, Target's a client of mine. I've been a fan of theirs for many years, and we can't thank them enough for their support and, more importantly, their belief in us and what we're trying to accomplish here. Target Community and Educational Services is a nonprofit in Carroll County striving to enhance the lives of people with disabilities. And through their Human Services graduate program at McDaniel College, you too can have the life-changing experience of working with these amazing people while getting your master's, basically for free. Uh, find out about their graduate program at mcdaniel.edu or Target's website, targetcommunity.org. And while you're there, think about donating directly to Target Community to help enhance the lives of people with disabilities. Uh, I also have to thank Hoffa Beans and Biscuits uh, for the t-shirt. They are the t-shirt sponsor of this episode. And of course, George's One York and Tony Town, the lovely bed and breakfast that uh, Tony Town has. They are fantastic if you need a good little getaway. And, um, yeah, that's about that. Um, I like that mug. Yeah, it's a good mug. It's, it's a nice it, mug. Apparently, this is the original mug they ordered for George's in New York, and they gave it to me to have on the show. So thank you again, George's. And uh, Hoffa Beans actually was last episode, so I'll put a little link up there uh, in case you didn't catch that. They are um, – they have a sober home and they're trying um, all their beans and stuff goes towards uh, getting addiction out of our community, which is great. And uh, the McDaniel, just a side note about them real quick, the human management service, uh, human services management program at McDaniel is a 30 credit program where they can give you 
80% of your tuition paid for through a scholarship, an annual stipend of $26,000. And of course, if you are part of the program, you get free room and board while in the program. So a pretty sweet deal if you're looking to get into the human services management field. Ah, back to us though and run more here. This is the one I was excited to get to because I think it's an important one and I, I think more people need to hear it nowadays because Amazon's it, right? I mean, that's all there is in the world anymore, right? It's just Amazon. So <laughs> how, uh, how, what do you think the future of brick and mortar is, local shopping, and, and how do you think these people compete with Amazon? It's tough and, and I get frustrated now when I see the little Amazon vans that pull up and down. They always park illegally on the other side of the street. I don't know why it irks me so much. I'm like, you guys are shipping all this Amazon no, stuff. And then you park I, illegally. I don't It's one of those little things that just oh, irks no, me. I can, I can complain about some delivery people. We, we hate, we can't stand Instacart because their drivers just pour wherever they, they want. They don't, they don't give yep. care, crap about property or signs. They just do whatever they want. It's annoying. So no, I can, I can understand that frustration. <laughs> it's been interesting to see, you know, when we first opened, like it was a very no, no place for us. Like we we're not allowed to sell, like I'm not allowed to sell on Amazon, which is great. And same with other retailers. We're not allowed to sell on Amazon and the manufacturers for a while were really, we, they were against Amazon too. They wanted people if they were looking to buy shoes to come to us or come yeah. to them or come to Dick, one of their, their places. The last couple of years, we have sort of seen a change in that where they're allowing some manufacturers to ship or to, some of the manufacturers have sort of said, well, we'll sell these models just online or just on Amazon. Gotcha. And it's definitely made it more challenging for us. Um, what, what we're starting to see a turn in with us is, is availability has been really challenging, especially with COVID and such, is that we're seeing yeah. brands that will like, you know, we, we only have X amount of product because things are being delayed at port and we're going to hold 90% of them for ourselves to sell directly to you and directly on Amazon. And then you'll sort of get what's left over there. And it's really making it harder for us to sort of, for everybody in this in industry to sort of compete. Right. So that's one of the reasons why like so much of what we do is, is trying to create that experience and that yeah. bond and, and even that customer service side. One thing that's really been beneficial to us and across the whole board is we have no say in our pricing. And like, it seems silly, but like it makes a huge difference from us. So if you're coming and you're finding a shoe from us or you go to Dick's or you go to Amazon or that company, we have to sell it all the same. And if you don't, they will come and take your, take your product away. Wow. I actually had a shoe on, that I screwed up. There was a shoe from New Balance that you're not allowed to sell online at all. And I was like, that's, and which I, I like because it makes people come into us. Right. And I wasn't paying attention. I was new on online and I listed it. Within like 24 hours, I had this serious letter waiting for me about like, you need to pull that shoe off and we can, we can, we can pause your account for six months if you don't. I was like, well, that's, that's kind of, <laughs> that's, them that's kind of nice. Yeah. So it does make it a little easier for us to have a playing field as far as price goes. But what I always tell people when they're looking at Amazon, I'll have people they'll say, well, I, I hear what you're saying, but I found the shoe right here for $90 on Amazon. When you're looking at products like ours, you have to be really careful about where they're coming from. So if yeah. you see that somebody is selling a product like a shoe on Amazon, and it says they have one size nine in a Brooks Ghost, which is a very popular running shoe, that's one person selling that shoe. That's not coming from a licensed dealer. Right. So you need to be careful of where you're sort of buying those products from. And we see people come in and say, I got a shoe when it was from Amazon and it broke down really fast. Well, that was probably some sort of knockoff shoe. Well, yeah, and people don't realize there's a lot of fraud on Amazon. A lot of fraud on I, Amazon. I bought Pumas that because they were cheap, right? Super yeah. cheap. And and I got them. I'm like, this is not suede to begin with. That's the first thing I know they're fake. But yeah, they, they just wore down. And so, yeah, I, I think a lot of people don't understand that. eBay, Amazon, there's a lot of fraud, product fraud. There's a lot of product fraud. And and so much of what we're doing is, is, is we're sort of trying to educate the consumer, not just on what's right for them, but sort of like, what's just sort of right? You know, there, there's some things to be said about like, you, you know, you're naming some of the, some of your local sponsors here and, and they're, they're helping support what you're doing here. We support a bunch of things, you right. know, like we, we, we donate money yeah, to Amazon the local doesn't. college. I always say that. I'm like, have you ever been to a local 5k and on the back when it lists the local sponsor, have you ever seen Amazon on there? Right. The answer is no. Well, and you, there's other thing too. Hey, I launched myself into space on taxpayer money. Right. <laughs> yeah. I'm, yeah. I, I'm kind of over it myself. Yeah. what do you do? Okay. That's great. You're trying to escape the planet. Why not try to f help? make things better here instead of trying to make, you know, yeah. So I, I get your point. There. <laughs> it, it, it makes it, it, it definitely is, it, you know, and I, and I'm, I'm always very cautious about like how to work. I don't want to offend people when they'll, when they'll come in and they'll say, you know, they'll ask these sort of Amazon esque questions or they'll pull up and say, will you match this price? And it's like, that's not apples to apples. And right. we need to be really understanding, but like you, you go, go feel free to look at the manufacturer and that's where we need to trust that it's coming from. Cause if the manufacturer is dictating the price and they're saying the price is X, if you see it elsewhere, that's not that's not the same product that they're selling, right? And you need to be just sort of cautious and educational on it. But that's also why we really put a lot of energy into like how it could create an experience for people. You yeah. know, we were talking about sort of our group runs earlier and such, and like 
that has been really beneficial for us. It's like, if we can get people in and experience what we do with on the customer service side, the knowledge side and all that good stuff. And the fact that like, Hey, we want you to be active. We're going to do it as a group experience. You're not going to get that same experience from online. So like, that's right. a big focus of what we're trying to do is create an environment that people can come in and be judgment free zone. Like I, I always loved that judgment free zone thing yeah. that planet, that planet, I would say planet Hollywood, planet fitness has and such. We've always been that way here. It's like, let's come in and it doesn't matter what your, your walk of life or anything about you we just go out and there being active together and yeah. create this great community together. And, and I think if we, if we look at it as, as our community and like protecting our own main streets and such, cause this is the backbone of our little town yeah. is our main street. There's, um, where my wife is from up in Pennsylvania, like her main street where she was from is a, de- is a dead main street. And like what that means to the community, right. you know, when you walk around those little cities when there's just nothing, yeah, it's, it's really hard. It's depressing. Yeah, it is. And we're in this time now, like our main street and the main street, in Tawny town and Eldersburg, there's these really great little hubs. Yeah. And now we're in this point where you can park your car on a Saturday and go have a great meal and get a comic book and go get some cool fashion and pick up some shoes and yeah. get a harmonica. Like that's a really cool thing. And meet other people of your community. Yes. That's, uh, you know, yes. that's the other point of this show is we realized with COVID and everything else, like community got lost a little bit. And especially now where people just yell at each other on social media about political crap, talk to someone to their face where you can't just say whatever you want. You can't hide behind a screen. And you know what? At the end of the day, decide to just be nice instead of being right. Yeah. You know? So, uh, yeah, we, we agreed totally. And I'm sure the running, I mean, I've never been to a race, I'll admit, but everyone that has ever gone to one says it's the coolest thing ever. Cause you said no one judges you there for how fast you can go or what you're doing. The whole purpose of that day is just to come out and have fun. Yep. Yep. You know, and it's, it's a goal, you know, you put something and you, we, there's different cycles in racing and running. You know, when people come in, like August is a very busy month for us. It's back to school time. And typically in the running cycle, people are getting ready for their fall races. So typically in the fall, people are running, you know, it might be a half marathon or a full, like the Baltimore running festival. They have a 5k, a relay, a half marathon, a marathon, and that's in October. So people will start saying, you know, I'm eight weeks out and this is my planning cycle. I'm following this Jeff Galloway run to walk program, you know, or whatever their program may be. So this is the time they get in. So when people come in, like we love talking about their journey of like, what are you training for? I'm getting ready for a half marathon. So they'll come in and get their shoes. Then maybe halfway down the lines are getting closer. Maybe they'll come in and get some fuel and they'll come in and say, I've never tried mid run fuel. And we'll talk, have that conversation. They get to the race and it's like the race is like 3% of what the entire race experience is. Like race day is a small part. It's all those little things along the way. And it's a total experience and journey. And so when you finish it, it's not just that day that I showed up and did a half marathon. It's like, I have been planning and I got my shoes and I got up early on a Saturday morning and went out there with my friends and did a 6 a.m. run and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And it's like a, it's a experience. It is a whole experience. Well, a sense of accomplishment at the end of that. Total, too. Totally. And that's honestly like I went and I was at a, a 50 K, which is like a 31 mile race. My friend was running it and I was on his crew team and I, at the end, I said, I bet about 5% of the people there were racing it. They were like, like, you know, like racing it. Everybody else was like having fun and like, taking pictures and, and like dressing in funny costumes and like their fun was running 31 miles and it took them a long time to do it. But like, that was their experience and their journey. And it was really cool to see. And it's like, could have been sitting at home this morning, yeah. but like they put a, and, and to get to the point to be able to go out and even have fun for 31 miles. And it was through like really tough terrain up at Catoctin. Like it was a really challenging race. And these people right. were, there's bloodied knees, you know, big smiles and like covered in dirt and crap and like <laughs> sweaty and like, having the time of their lives. Yeah. That's what it's about. That's <laughs> what it's about. Well, and, um, so you, you had two races that you were going to plan, right? So one was the Frank Schaefer Memorial race. Yeah. And the other one was the half marathon at night. Yeah. So, um, I do a lot of trail running. Uh, as I've gotten older, I've transitioned into doing more trail stuff. It's, it's easier yeah. on my body. Well, if I wanted to run, I've always liked trail running. Yeah. I can't do the blacktop. It destroys me. It's It's really hard on the body. And I've been running for so many years and I, I'm a, I'm a better road runner than I am trail runner, but I have found that if I want to be a road runner, I have to spend more time on the trail. Well, and the trails are fun. I mean, you're dodging stuff. You got to look out for things. You're ducking. Dip, yeah. Duck, dodge, <laughs> right. dip, whatever that is. <laughs> From dodgeball. Yes, the three Ds are the five Ds yeah. of dodgeball. But yeah, I mean, it's 
it is really challenging and it's it's hard like it's it's much harder and it's it's hard not just because the terrain is more challenging but like you have to put a little more energy into it you have to get in your car and drive yeah. somewhere and you might have to get different pair of shoes that are more trail specific and that kind of stuff so almost in, to the point of the racing it's almost more rewarding when you go out there and run you know a couple miles on the trail because it, it takes a little more out of you what what makes a trail shoe i this is off the but what makes a trail shoe more of a trail shoe is it extra uh sole or is it so there's a couple factors like the trail shoes we have here besides the fact that the the uh, the outsole is made of a much more grippy and sort of water resistant and almost we use the term okay. sticky so like when you're running down a hill that it's like muddy or like or like rocky like you don't like you touch the ground and you're not going anywhere forward you're like stuck it gotcha. is like like gecko you know like it yeah. so it really challenged makes it so your footing feels more confident on your hmm. when you're touching the ground on it okay depending on on the trail model they also have what's called a stone guard built in there so it's like this like this piece that goes through the shoe so if you step on a sharp rock it won't penetrate your foot yeah that would hurt yeah right I've and done, um yeah. <laughs> They might have a uh, uh, drainage. So if you go through like like this race that I'm talking about planning on, we have two streams crossings where it'll go up like knee high. So you can run through knee high water and within a few seconds, the water kicks out of your shoe and your foot's dry. That's cool. Like it drain. And it, and it seems like, how could that, I'm telling you, it's amazing. The technology in these shoes where it's like, my feet are, I didn't even realize that my feet were going through something wet. I'm totally dry. Well, I mean, the technology, I mean, just coming in and getting my f feet scanned and your little scanner is like, yeah, this this is definitely a leap forward from the shoe stores that you, you typically think of, right? Because, yeah, step in our little scanner. Oh, you can see your feet need this specific shoe yeah. because you can see where all your pressure is. Very, very cool. Well, and we also talk too. you know, a lot of people go, oh, Carroll County, like little farming town. We always talk a lot of business around here for some really cool tech doing some high end stuff. And yeah, I mean, and, and going back to like sort of that competing with the Amazon type of mentality of like, we need to be one step ahead. They they already have the infrastructure in place. They've had that well before I've been in here. So they're going to be able to ship to you sometimes same day, that kind of stuff. So to draw people in, we're sort of looking at the, the next advancement in technology that way. They might be able to have a million different shoe colors listed and such. But I feel confident if you come in here, you have a better chance of finding the correct shoe for your body than just the best looking shoe. And sometimes I'll tell, you know, people come in here and say, I'm just looking for like a blue shoe. I'm like, that's cool. That's f We can help you find a blue shoe. But like, if your goal is just be healthy, like then let's, let's take the color out of the equation. Right. Or let's look for the shoe first and then we'll go see what other colors are out there. I had to tell your salesman, I said, I guess I'm going to have to get over, or sales lady, I should say. I, should, I guess I'm going to have to get over myself because uh, I, I didn't really like the color of the shoes, but they were so comfortable. I was like, okay, whatever. I don't care. Yeah, I did want a different color, but it was of course. Like, but you know, at the end of the day, the, you walk on them and you're like, oh yeah, totally who, worth it. Who cares what the yeah. color is? On yeah, these and, and I have that like not an awkward conversation, but there are times where I've had people. I, I've had a conversation with a woman who came in and she was in a walking boot and she had been dealing with all these foot injuries, and I would pull shoes out for her and like I remember when she like I opened the box, and, I, and she was like, no, I won't even put that on my foot, and I was like, what do you think looks what do you think looks worse? This shoe or your, or your walking or boot? Or your boot, yeah. And I was like, because you, your podiatrist told you to come here. Like they said, go to Run More to get a shoe to help you get over this injury. Like, See, it doesn't have to be running. Uh, right? I was like, you are here to for a reason. So let's let's get all that preconceived notion out because your boot has got to not be fun to walk around in. And I get to tell you, it doesn't look all that good. Yeah, no. Yeah, you don't not, have, it's, it's, it's not bedazzled. It's not designed. There's nothing doing yeah, there. Like, it's not bedazzled. Let's, let's find out, you know, especially when like, you know, like I, well, I'll have a shoe and I'm like, I know this shoe is the right shoe for you. In my head, you know, usually I'll, I'll, I'll I, I pull a couple ideas out for something. Usually in my head, I'm like, I have a pretty good sense. This is going to be the one we're going to end up. It makes the most sense for this person, but I'd be pretty foolish of myself to, I'd be pretty fool of myself to walk out with one pair of shoes and be like, all right, I'll meet you at the register. You right. know, like, so I always bring out a couple things in like their style and family based on what I'm seeing in their scan. But I usually have one in my head that I'm looking at. And like, it's hard when I'm, when somebody was like, I won't even try that. Or like, I don't like the color. I'm like, I, this is going to fix you. Trust me. This shoe was designed for Morton's Neuroma. And you don't even know what, you don't even know what Morton's Neuroma is, but I know it. I know what you're telling me. That's what you have. And right. this shoe will help with that. Just trust me on this. Well, and, and yeah, I mean, shoes, I would say since the early nineties were, were kind of pitched as fashion, right? Yeah. And, and, and I would say you're not coming here. If you're looking for fashion, you're looking for, I want my knees to feel better. I want to run better. I want to, function. yeah, I want to function better. Yeah. yeah. So the, um, yeah, if, you're not coming here for fashion. <laughs> for fashion. Well, we week. have some pretty awesome looking. Oh yeah, shoes. the designs are awesome. A yeah. lot of it is much more function over that, and that, yeah. and again, that's that's sort of what I tell people too. It's like if it is just a color thing, like you are better off going and just looking online or yeah. going to Dick's or hey, go on our website because we've got all that. You can you can well, look by color, and that's why I have my Pumas, yeah. every every color under the sun. But you know, I, the, the Hoka is that correct? Hoka. Hoka. I love my Hokas that I got from you. They are comfy. It's like walking on clouds. My knees don't hurt anymore. And Kelly, my lovely wife, has them. She has hokas as well. 
Uh, and I mean, again, you know, the, the saleswoman brought me a couple of different shoes and they all were great. But what I was focusing on, like I could feel little pinches in certain areas or like the sole was hitting me. And, and the pair of shoes I have on now is like, okay, none of that's there. This is the same comforts there, but without all the little nags. And, you know, yep. so it was good to have the, that selection of, okay, which is the right one for you? Well, this is, so, this is how dorky we are. Like, I, I always imagine myself like Ollivander from Harry Potter when he's going and getting the wands for Harry and them. It's like, that's how I feel in the back. Is I'm, in, I'm like listening to this person. I'm like, this, this shoe. I like got all my shoe boxes. And I like to think of myself as pulling something that's going to do something magical for right. this person. Let them go out there and run or walk or just be healthy. Because yeah. again, it, it means so much to me that if we can get somebody to be a little more active or just enjoy walking or running just 1% more, yeah. that's a win for us. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or just feel better. Or just feel better. When you feel better, everything else seems to yeah, fall exactly. in line as well. Well, uh, we are running up on time here. So real quick. I told you I can talk. I, told you <laughs> I wasn't was so worried easy. about it. No, <laughs> this was a great episode. You had a lot of good stuff to share. Because again, I think people, you know, this overnight success crap needs to go by the wayside because nobody's an, an overnight success. It just doesn't. It's, it's a, I've had a lot of nights in the last seven years and I haven't had overnight success. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not once. Um, for, uh, for those that have yet to come visit you, where can everyone find you? So we are located in downtown Westminster. We are right next to Raphael's and Mercer Carpet and on the same block as Genie Bird. And then, um, yeah, if you're ever looking to just come out and just try one of our runs or walks or anything, if you find us on Instagram or Facebook, our, our handle for all of our social medias is at Let's Run More. And there's two O's and more, like my last name. Um, and if you're ever curious, you can find us on the, on the YouTubes under our YouTube, our uh, Run More channel. And okay. uh, it's great. You can see some of the videos and sort of talk about how the breakdown of, and why this shoe does this and why this shoe is specifically shaped like this. And there's a lot of good information on there. And, great. you know, one co cool thing with our with the stuff that we've been doing here is we're always happy to just answer questions. Yeah. You know, if you're just, I have this injury, is there something you can do to help with this? Or We're always here. We're always happy to help. Great. And uh, uh, is there a physical address here? Yep. We're at 28 West Main Street right here in, in Westminster. Westminster. And do you have a website? Yep. It's letsrunmore.com. And uh, that's where our online store is, all our upcoming races, our blogs, Great. all that good stuff. So if people know what they already want and you have it in stock, they can just order it right on your they website. They can order it on our website. They can do a pickup. There's a couple different ways to do that. You can reserve it. You can call it. You can do it on our website. We'll ship it out for free or just leave it here and you can come by and pick it up and try it on and make sure it's there. So there's a bunch of different ways to find us and to get shoes set aside for you. Awesome. Great. Sounds good. Well, uh, Steve, thank you so much for your Thanks time. Thanks for letting me be here. Yeah, of course. And uh, all, the, all the good uh, background on how this came to be because... You know, in my head before I met you, I was like, oh, this guy just loves, you know, shoes. He just wanted to have a shoe store. But it turns out that wasn't even, you know, like it wasn't even the case. So that's why we do the show because a lot of people, it's like, you know, they just don't see the, the background of what went into what's around them. So thank you so much again. And um, for all you out there uh, listening and watching, if you like what you see in here, please be sure to like, subscribe, leave a five-star review. Uh, of course, you can donate to us on our homepage at aroundtowncc.com. But uh, take care, be, be good to one another, and uh, we'll see you next episode on Around Town.